Hi everybody, I thought I would do a video about library books today. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, miss their libraries during lockdown, I especially did, because the library that I worked at was shut for a while. But I'm also a member of two other boroughs of libraries as well, and I have quite a few library books out at the moment. Um, some of them in particular can't go back yet because my local library is still shut. So I thought I'd go through the ones that I've got here and uh, talk about those ones, why I'd pick them or what I thought of them if I'd read them. Uh, so what made me start on this video was that I finished Jackpot by Nick Stone today. Uh, this was one of my picks for Book off I really enjoyed it. This has been on my TBR for a couple of months and I just never got round to it. It's basically about a girl who works in a petrol station or a gas station, as they say in America, uh, sells a winning lottery ticket and then it doesn't get claimed. So she chases after the old lady that she uh, believes bought it. So it's all about that story and different friendships that she makes along the way. And yeah, I'm focusing on her family and some of the troubles they're going through. I give this one a four star, really enjoyed it. And so this one will be going back to the library as soon as I can take it there. Uh, the next ones that I've got to talk about are ones that I've read as well, that are ready to go back. Like I said, one of the libraries I can't take them back to, so I've just got to keep them in my house till then. Um, this one was Sunnyside Up by Susan Kalman. This is just a really feel-good, cheer-up one. She's not shy about talking about her depression that she's suffered with in the past. But she's just looking at the positives of everything and it's just a really fun light read i read this during lockdown and i really needed it another one that i finished during lockdown was the wizards of once by cressida cowell i think i saw a lot of people talking about this during believe a maybe the first year quite a few people chose to read it i've been making my way through the series um, it's about wizards and witches, um, ones in particular, Wish and Zar. They're both on different sides of uh, the tribe, so one's a wizard, one's a witch, and it's just focusing on their adventures. I am up to the third one now, which you'll see in a bit because that's also in here. I read the second one, or oh, listened to the second one on audio book, and I know what people say about David Tennant, he's great at... Um, at being uh, an audiobook narrator, but I just preferred reading them because of the being able to see the illustrations as well. And I'm not great with audiobooks unless I'm really, really invested. Uh, so, yeah, I'm reading the third one physically, so hopefully, I um, can get that one done soon so I can get the last in the series and find out who the hidden narrator is. The next one that I read was Meant to Be by Lisa Faulkner, and uh, she talks about her. Oh, trials and tribulations of trying to have a child and struggling and then uh, adopting a little girl. Um, you know, obviously there's uh, trigger warnings in this for infertility and going through IVF and things like that. Um, but it's really uplifting because of how she talks about a little girl and, and how it was meant to be. Uh, so, yeah, good one. Uh, if that sounds interesting, definitely check that one out. So the next few are three that I managed to pick up today. I actually went into work on my week off just to pick up my books, not that I needed any more. Uh, so the first one that I picked up was Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. Really enjoyed A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. But I'm also really intimidated by this one because I found the other one a little bit haunting. And you might not know this about me, but I'm a bit of a scurdy cat. I am a mood reader and it takes... I have to be really in the right mood to try a thriller or certain crime books. And it's a shame because when I'm really into them, oh, I can't put them down. But sometimes they do tend to stay with me for a long time because something's like haunting. And, and I found that with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I had that feeling in my stomach of, oh, I want to stop, but I really wanted to carry on. And, and these are YA, aren't they? Yeah, YA. So I, I just, I'm just like that. I'm like that with films. Um, I'm the only person I know who finds some of the Harry Potter films a bit a bit near the end, a bit scary. <laughs> I watch them, I love them, 
but I've always been quite a scary cat. You'll never catch me watching a horror or anything like that. So I'm a little bit intimidated by this, but really want to go with it because I loved A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I think I gave that five stars, really enjoyed it. So looking forward to this one. Uh, the next one that I picked up was Miss Cop's Midnight Confessions by Amy Stewart. This is in the Cop Sisters series that I've mentioned before that I got through a recommendation on mytbr.co. This is the third one in the series that I'm going to try. Um, this was a great recommendation for me. Um, really wanted to try more historical fiction. Uh, it's actually that she's a female, yeah, a deputy sheriff. I kept saying him like detective, but she's basically uh, a detective. I just said deputy sheriff sorry can't speak words uh yeah so these are a great series if you're into crime and mystery these are a good one to try and the other one that i picked up today from the library was knee deep in life by laura belbin don't know if you can see the pictures on the front but they're hilarious and the ones on the back as well so it's basically talking about how people as mothers set themselves too big a target really to to be good parents and actually sometimes you're doing a good job and you don't realize it and there's you know you see all these highlight reels online of how people are doing and actually it's more like this so uh, really looking forward to that one Um, I love anything about motherhood and just telling people to just pat yourself on the back when you're actually doing an okay job right so I've got a big stack here as well Um, some of these Normally, I keep them out not for very long, and then if I don't get around to reading them, I want to take them straight back because I don't want to keep them out when other people um, might be wanting to give them a go. Especially where I work, if I see that one of the books I've got out is on hold, and I don't think I'm going to get around to it because I've obviously got that much to read, I just take them back and put myself back on the list. But like I said, one of the libraries in particular by me, it's not open, so I can't even take them back. Uh, so if it seems like I've got rather a lot out, it's just because I can't take some back. But when if I change my mind about some of them, they'll just go straight back. So uh, the next one that I took out was Homework by Julie Andrews. I love Julie Andrews. Oh, I love the sound of music. And it is melting my heart at the minute because at bedtime, me and my little girl sing songs from Sound of Music. At the minute, she just asks me constantly for little vice, little vice. Uh, she loves it. Uh, we sing So Long Farewell. We sing... We sang some of the Mary Poppins songs, but I actually went to see Julie Andrews. Oh gosh, it could have been about five years ago now. I can't remember the exact year with my sister at the Liverpool Echo Arena. And it was just a question and answer with her. And she just talked about her life. And this book in particular talks about the Mary Poppins sound of music years. So I really want to listen, uh, watch this, watch this one, read this one. So I'm really looking forward to that. I picked this up really just before lockdown from the library that's actually shut at the minute. Please take me home the story of the rescue cat. I've got a cat, so any books about cats, I just really want them. This one's a bit of a chunker. I think it's just different rescue stories. But I just keep not reaching for it. So I'm hoping there'll come a readathon where this will be one that I can pick up. Because if it is, yeah, it's different. The chapters are different stories, so I really should, even if I just read a story a day, I should be able to get through that one. I really don't want to take it back before I've read it, um, but we'll see how we go with that. The next one I've had out for quite a while, it's To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I've put it on a few readathon, readathon lists and just never got around to it, and I love the premise of it. Somebody you know, sending letters and then the idea of this girl sending these out and they're never meant to be read, and then they are. And I really want to watch the Netflix series, so I have to read this to watch the Netflix series. So if you've read this one and you enjoyed it, tell me how good you found it, because I really need to get onto this. The next one is The Number to Feline Detective Agency. At the library where I work, we do a home library service where we pick books for people who are housebound um, and can't get out. I have, I think I've got four people on my list at the minute, but one of the ladies... Um, like like cosy mysteries and I found these ones and started sending these to her and when I saw it I thought oh, I'm quite fancy these myself I haven't tried it yet but it's only quite small so I really should give it a go but yeah wanting to try that one the next one is Shakespeare's Scribe and um, this one I don't know if this there's three in this series I think it's a uh, junior fiction and I read the other one uh, 
the Shakespeare Stealer. I think I read that one for Believe a the first time, uh, the first year. Really enjoyed it and wanted to give the other two a go, but I don't know if this is the third one or the first one. I don't know, I'll have to look that up, but I wanted to give that a go. It's basically about a young boy who, well, he was sent to steal some of Shakespeare's plays and he didn't, he ended up joining this, joining like a theatre group or something like that. It's been a while since I've read it and I don't want to give any real spoilers away, but yeah, really want to try that one. The next one is, it's a non-fiction travel, which like, you know, that is one of my favourite genres. Um, so it's basically about a woman called Jackie, who it says is a gypsy at heart, never courageous enough to be a real travel when she was young. And it took the death of the husband um, on the eve of the joint retirement oh, to show her the importance of Stephen the day, season the day. So she's over 60 and she's going on some guided tours and things like that. So, yeah, really want to try that one. Didn't realise it was because her husband had just died. So, yeah, really want to give that one a go. Uh, this one I got just before lockdown. Uh, basically called for. Um, it's about, I think it's about a couple who share everything with another couple. They spend a lot of time together and then they go away together. And I, I don't know if one of the couples ends up, like, you end up mixing and matching. I don't know. It sounds like that from... I'm not spoiling anything because the four of them will have shared everything. So, yeah, really want to give that a go. It's another one where I keep picking it off to put it on lists to read and never getting around to it. So I'm wondering whether so next month I want to do my Scrabble and Spouse. So hopefully Andy might pick some of these off my list. Then in November I want to do believe a -thon again because I think that's happening in November. I'm wondering if in December I should do uh, do my TBR based just around library books and getting some of these off my list because otherwise I'll never get through them. Uh, so the next one, I kept saying I wanted this out from the library and never got around to it and then I saw it at um, a local library, um, gosh it might be a few weeks ago now and went for it again, only because P.S. I Love You, I think that was quite, I know it was uplifting in parts but quite sad and and then I thought oh I just don't know when I'll ever want to read this if it's sad again, it's basically seven years after um, Jerry's died and she's inspired a group, a, a, a group inspired by Jerry's letters calling themselves the P.S. I Love You Club, so it does sound nice, I just don't want it to be really sad. But I should give it a go. Do you know what I should do is do what some people do and try a chapter of some of these and see which stand out to me the most. So I might do that and see what I think. But anyway, yeah, I want to give that one a go. The next one is The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. I see these at the library and they're so chunky. You see people taking them out and I'm like, oh, goodness me, you know, that's a lot to get through. But I didn't realise the premise of it was that there's one book, I'm assuming this one, that talks about the, this family of sisters. And then each individual book is about a sister. Well, I've got a sister, I love her to bits, and anything about sisters just appeals to me. So I want to give the first one a go and see what I think. It's the chunkiness that puts me off, but then I think if I really get into it, I'll, I'll want to whiz through them all. So... Because as you know, unless I really hate something, once I've started it, I have to see it all the way through. So if I read this, and even if it's just like a three star, I'm going to want to finish all seven after that. So we'll see. The next one is Beyond the Odyssey by Maz Evans. I'm making my way through this series. I've read Who Let the Gods Out. I've read, oh, what was the blue one? I can't remember the name of it. I read it recently as well. And it's related to, it's like a song lyric, isn't it? I'll, I'll put a picture up here of it. Um, yes, I just want to carry on with it. I don't know how many are in this series. Let's see if it says. No, there's just the first two on this. Or simply the quest was the other one. So I don't know how many are in it. I think there might be four. But yeah, wanting to carry on and find out more about Elliot Hooper and how they get on against the evil gods. Next is one I've already mentioned, not three times, purely because I want to get onto the fourth one and find out who the narrator is. So yeah, excited to give that one a go. This one, I might have to take back before I read it because I took it out with the best of intentions, but it makes me really sad thinking of reading it. 
Storm in a Sea Cut by Caroline Flack. How tragic. This poor girl. Oh, I just don't know if I can read it. I was the same with um, the Naya Rivera one. I had that out on Borrow Box and I just kept putting it off because I just find reading a book that somebody's written with the whole life ahead of them. Um, I just find it really sad and I just, I feel like I, she, I wait to her to read it because, you know, she, she wrote this and she was proud of it. But feeling how tragic it is because her life was cut short. And the same for Naya Rivera as well. So this one I might not read because I just don't know if uh, my heart will take it. So I'll keep you posted about this one, but God love her. Next to the Battle for Perfect and the Trouble with Perfect. Loved the first one. Really want to give these a go. I'm in the middle of so many series. And maybe I'll do a video of all the series I'm in the middle of because there's quite a few. Uh, really want to carry on this series uh, about, gosh, I can't remember the names of Violet and Boy. Oh, Boy, yeah, that's why I can't remember it because his name is Boy. Um, and go into this place called Perfect where you have to wear rose tinted specs. Um, so interesting to see where this one goes next. Another one, another travel non-fiction, kidding around, tales of travel with children. I've now got a little girl. Um, I've got real anxiety about travel. I've been to quite a lot of places. I really don't like flying, but I've been to Bulgaria, Greece, Italy, Spain, um, Ireland. I have been to places because I figure if I want to get there, I've got to do it. But now I've got a little girl, like for instance, the other day she was watching, I don't know if it was an episode of Vampirina or that's a favourite thing at the minute, Vampirina or Doc Stuffins or something like that. And they mentioned China and she just turned to me and said, where could we go to China? And I was like, oh, so that's what she dad about that. But then Andy said, oh yeah, I'd like to go to China too. I was like, how am I going to get on a plane and go to China? Because I'd love to go to Australia, but I just don't know. And I know these long haul flights are a lot better in You've got more leg room and you can walk around, but that makes no difference to me because I'm still stuck in a tin can in the sky. Just my thing is, if I get in a boat and it sinks, I've got a chance of getting out and swimming. If I I can't fly, so if anything happens to that plane, sorry, I just I've got a real fear about flying. Maybe I need to go on one of them special courses. But anyway, I wanted to read this because if we do, when we do take Sophie traveling. I thought this might be, this just might be quite funny. So I really wanted to give this a go. The next one is Real Chunker, The Complete Borrowers. I read uh, The Borrowers by Mary Norton for, did I read it for Pixarathon? Could have done. Um, I will, that was run by Lily for Home for the Lost, is it called? I'll link her channel below. I read the first one, but then, I found out that that's not the only borrower's story there is. There is. So I read the borrowers. There's the borrowers afield, the borrower, the, the borrowers afloat, the borrowers aloft, the borrowers avenged, and then whatever Paul Stainless is. One, oh, I don't know if that's another story that she wrote, but there's at least one, two, three, four, five, five, maybe six borrowers stories. So now, because I know about it, I have to read them all. So I've got that one to do. And the final one is The Tears of the Giraffe by Alexander McCall Smith. This is the second in the number one ladies detective agency. My dad got me the first one for my birthday. And so I decided to carry on with the series, but I've, I've got at least two or three on there that I've picked up myself. Um, I've noticed that in one of the pound stores, they have like a replay section where they're like secondhand um, and you can buy them for like a pound. So I've got a couple of them there, so I really want to carry on with this, but there's loads. I don't know how many. Oh my goodness. There's at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's at least 18, if that's the most up-to-date list. I know he brings some out all the time. So I've got a way ahead of me, but they're not massive, so I really should. This has been on my list for ages as well. So with some of these books, there's no excuse, because if you look at the size of some of them, they wouldn't take me that long. So that's another one. Those are the ones that I'm talking about a minute that I've got in my house. Obviously, some of them are to be took back to the library, and that's not including the one, two, three, four, five, six that I've talked to you about in my last blog last week. 
Search for Mary, The Great Escape, A Train to Impossible Places, A Man Called All, Committed, uh, Love Story, that's the sequel to P.S. I Love You, and Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. So there's a lot of library books there. I take them back as soon as they finish them when I can. And like I said, this is the library shut. So until I can take that back. So that's 20, was that 25? And you're allowed 20 out from a library anyway, because these are three different libraries. I really haven't gone to the maximum. So yeah, wish me luck. If you've read any of those books, let me know what you think. Because actually, if somebody gives me a really glowing recommendation, that might encourage me to, to pick at least one of them up. Um, I'll get a few, quite a few of them with Bookoplathon. I think there's like there's at least four uh, of those books on Bookoplathon, so I'm hoping to get through those this month. But like I said, I'm thinking December now. Get through the rest as many library books as I can. Great hers. Right. So thank you for listening. If you like this video, please think about liking it and consider subscribing because it'll just be more of this. Me saying how many books I don't need. <laughs> and then going out and getting more. Thanks very much. Bye.